welcome to worship this <coughs> week. We gather together in this warm place because maybe it's cold outside. <laughs> Our church's mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the way that we do that is we love God, we love others, and we serve others. The baskets are making their way around. Um, this is for youth and education this week. So thank you for your gifts to help um, those ministries. There are some announcements in your worship folder. If you've not been here for a couple of weeks, you, this is brand new to you, but we have kind of reformatted things and, and hopefully made it a little bit easier to read and, and put things together for you. They're including um, the worship the announcements for worship, and I'm going to highlight some of them. I won't go through all of them, but this is available for you to take it and still go in your refrigerator so you can remember the things that are coming up. Um, today, the Boy Scout meal is in the fellowship hall downstairs um, immediately following our worship service. Really bad girls in the Bible is a Bible study that's, that's coming up. This week your help is needed and you're available to bring down the Christmas decorations. They're going to do that on Tuesday. Starts at 9 o'clock and Pam's got all kinds of information in there for you. Um, the casserole committee has a sign-up sheet in the back that you can help with that. There's also a sign-up sheet for helping with um, the, the nursery, and then a sign-up sheet if you're interested and in, in able to help with the children's messages. So please check that out if you're um, able to do one of those things. Also, um, not listed here, so keep your ears pricked up for this one, Leadership Summit, Summit will be January 21st from 8.30 till noon. And um, it's for all leaders of the church. It's really for everybody in the church who'd like to participate. But if you are on some kind of a ministry team, if you're leading a ministry team, uh, if, if you uh, simply are really interested in the life of the church, we'd like you to come and be a part of that conversation. I think that you'll find it a helpful time, an inspiring time, and a time where we'll have some really good conversation about who we are as a church and where we want to go and how we might get there. Uh, so that, again, is January 21st at 8.30 until noon. So you've come out of a variety of activities this morning, um, trying to warm up and get your car warmed up and get here and your mind's kind of everywhere. So at this time, I invite you to focus yourself on this place, listening for God's voice. So take a deep breath. And may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us worship today. <laughs> Down by the door. 
when the lyrics will be on the screen. Nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning radiance. 
Lift up your eyes and look around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters on caregivers' hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and open wide because the sea's abundance will be turned over to you. The nation's wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephah. They will all come from Sheba, carrying gold and incense, proclaiming the Lord's praises. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. Jesus answered, Allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, repent. 
good job. Wait, stay. Let's, let's do it again just to make sure everybody sees it, okay? All right, one more time. You did that great. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Repent. She did it. She did it. Yay, good job. Repent means to turn around from a life of sin. From whatever you are doing, it means coming back. It means stopping and turning around because God is ready to receive us and give us forgiveness. And that means that we've got to stop what we're doing and be ready for a new life. And that, that's one of those things that baptism <laughs> reminds us of, that we have repented and we've asked for forgiveness and God's always ready to give it to us. So I have, I don't know if some of you are going to go, you're going to go to the children's church in a little bit. Some of you will probably stay here. But in this font, let me get up here. I'll try not to follow everybody. In this font, oh, oh, do you know what this is? It's the baptismal font. And um, in a little while, I'm going to pour some water in here. And I haven't poured it in there yet, but I have some um, discs in here. Come over here. I have some discs in here that are wet, and I'm going to give each of you one of these. And this is a reminder of God's love for you. And if you've been baptized, then it's a reminder of your baptism. And if you haven't, it's a reminder that God loves you very much. Okay? I, I, I see shorter people behind me, and I want to make sure you have one of these. So we're thankful that God did everybody get one. Did y'all have one? Okay. We're thankful that God um, loves us, God receives us into relationship, and God wants us to be reminded every day that God loves us. So you can take this and um, you, can, you can put it in your pocket if you want to. You can put it on your dresser at home. If you've got a purse, you can put it in your purse. But whenever you see it, let it remind you that God loves you. Okay, let's say a prayer. Thank you, God, for loving us always. And thank you for all of the ways that you remind us of that love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming forward. And thanks for the older kids for volunteering to come forward. I invite you now into a time of prayer. And um, we as we look at the worship folder, there are a number of names listed, and there are um, several things that I would like to um, include on here to give you a little bit more information. Um, this past week, Michelle Falstich's grandfather passed away, so please pray for her family. Um, Maxine Lawson fell on Thursday night and had surgery, and she's here at the hospital in Plymouth, so pray for her. The surgery went well. Um, Norma Ripley has a three-week-old granddaughter named Ida, who is in the hospital um, in Indianapolis, so who needs our prayers. And also, um, Phil Hemmings' brother died um, the end of November, and his sister just passed away after Christmas. And so please pray for, for Bill and his family and the loss of, of two siblings. Are there any other prayers that you would like to lift up for us to be aware of? I invite you to bow your heads with me now. Loving God, on this day when we remember Christ's baptism and our own, we're amazed once again at your love for us and the effort that you have been willing to make on our behalf from the earliest of times until our own. You offer us gifts and opportunities, reminders of your love and grace, people who point us toward you, experiences where we can receive what you have to offer. Help us to take the breaths that we need to, to see and to hear and to experience what you've given us. May we never feel alone, but may we feel surrounded by your presence. And may each of us in our own way reflect your love to others in ways that we're aware of and also in ways that we're not. We lift up to you the needs of our community, near and far. We pray for those who don't have what they need to nourish their bodies, their minds, or their souls. We pray for those who are cold, who don't have a home, 
who don't feel welcome where they are. We pray for the alone and the lonely, for those who struggle with relationships and difficulties at work or at school. We pray for those who are sick, including Maxine Lawson and, and little Ida Ripley. And we pray for those who are dealing with grief, including both Bill and Michelle's families. We remember those who are on our prayer list and, and others as well who we carry in our hearts and in our minds. We trust in your ability to take care of our every need, God. We know that you love us and we love you. So hear now our silent prayers as we offer them to you. All of these things we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Holy God, we thank you for your love that surrounds us and for all of the reminders of your presence with us and your care for us. May we respond lovingly in knowledge of that. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our shield. Amen. The holiday season has come and passed, but we're not quite done with it yet. There are still decorations to come down here at the church, and I have decorations at home to come down to. I used to take them down on, on uh, New Year's Day, but uh, several years ago I decided these are so pretty and I've been so busy, I think I'm just gonna leave them up a little bit longer, so I do that, but it's time this week. I'll gradually start putting them away. But it's January, a month that's known for its darkness, its bleakness, and its lack of sunshine. We have had a fair amount of sunshine this past week, um, more than I would have expected. Sunshine and blue skies. But in January, we can go for what seems like week after week after week with pure dreariness. For some of us, that can cause a kind of depression called spiritual, seasonal affective disorder. Seasonal Affective Disorder. But over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about, guess what, I let it slip, Spiritual Affective Disorder. Something that is caused by our busyness, our rush from this thing to the next, all kinds of things coming in at us, too many things to concentrate on, too many things to focus on at one time. So in this new year, what I'd like for us to consider is some everyday practices that can become spiritual disciplines that can help our lives to be more connected to God so that we can grow in our faith so that time can be more meaningful to us so that we can feel more light-hearted. If Jesus came into this world to bring light, then let's put us into the place where light shines so that we can feel it, so we can experience, so we can absorb some of it, so that we can reflect that light to others. So we begin our conversation at the baptismal font this morning. This is the place where we can flip the switch from a place of being in the darkness to a place of being in the light. Baptism is central to who we are as Christians. And I love on the early part of January for us to come together as a faith community to remember our baptisms, to celebrate our baptisms. And we do that on Baptism of the Lord Sunday where we remember how Jesus came to John in the River Jordan to be baptized by him. And that marked the beginning of his earthly ministry. So too, when we are baptized, it marks us as those who um, desire to follow Jesus Christ, who seek to be involved, involved in acts of service and love and, and um, generosity. Our baptisms link us together as a Christian community, and together as the church, we are a people who welcomes all people. We are a people who are defined by grace. We are a people who seek justice, and that all flows from our baptismal vows. Now, if you've not been baptized, I don't want you to feel as though you are excluded from this conversation, because you're not. And what I'd like for you to do is to consider this time as an opportunity and as an invitation to receive baptism, if that's something that you would like to have happen. And we can talk about that today, we can talk about that at another time. But it's a conversation for all people. All people are welcome at the baptismal font. 
So we remember in Matthew chapter 3 how Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John in the River Jordan. When John saw Jesus, he didn't know what to do. He wasn't sure how to respond. He said to Jesus, you are the one who should be baptizing me. But Jesus said to him, no, do it. God has been working over the years, through the centuries, in time to bring us to this moment. So baptize me. He instructed John, and John did it. So over the years, people have debated why Jesus would go to John for baptism. John's baptism was different than ours. At that time, baptism into the faith was one of three practices that included baptism. It included circumcision for males, and it also included giving an offering at the temple. It was a ceremonial purification that dated back to the Old Testament, a time of ritual cleansing. It was a self-administered act, and there would be witnesses who would observe and who would um, offer information, who would share information about the commands of Judaism. It, John's baptism um, was different from that time in that the baptism into the faith did not include the repentance of the sins, and it did not have the one-time significance of what John's baptism was. John's baptisms were regarded much like a, a permanent mark on one's forehead. It was a branding that the individual had a mark, a permanent mark of repentance and forgiveness and a promise to eternal life. It, was, uh, it sealed the person against the day of ultimate judgment. It demonstrated the recognition of death to the past and a resurrection promise to new life and reconciliation with the God who gave life. So as we learn more about what baptism is about, it confuses us even more as to why Jesus would go to John for baptism. We know that Jesus was sinless. That's something that we believe. So he would not need to go to John to repent of his sins and to be forgiven. We also believe that Jesus is the one who promised eternal life. He was the one who brought on this new age. So he would not need to receive the reassurance from John of eternal life. So why would Jesus come to be baptized by John? The first and probably most important reason was it was an act of fidelity and an act of submission to God. As Jesus stood waist deep in the river Jordan, he was saying to God, I am yours and you are mine. I love you, I will follow you, I will do whatever it is that you call me to do. And as he did that, as he went under the water, he redefined what messiahship was all about. As one who was born to be messiah, redefined messiahship. He redefined what it meant to be king. And he actually took on the, um, he took on the role of a servant and set aside his own ideas, ideals, and personal expectations for whatever it was God would call him to do. He set all aside his personal aspirations for God's will and God's way. And God was pleased. And a dove came from the heavens, and a voice could be heard, saying, This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Another reason that is particularly significant for us as to why Jesus would go under the water even though he was sinless, even though he didn't need the reassurance of eternal life, is that he came to be us. 
and P went down under the water like we do, being an example, um, being one who we could follow, reminding us that Jesus is willing to do and to go wherever we are in order to show that great and amazing love and grace. And as people saw him go into the waters, and they, as they experienced his baptism, they followed, and they went into the water as well. Our baptisms bring us into community, and they initiate us into the life of the church. As I told the children a little bit ago, um, there's not a particular age in the United Methodist Church where we recommend <laughs> baptism. We baptize infants who have no idea what's happening to them because we believe that we don't have to understand how God is working in our lives in order for God to be there, for God to be working. It's all gift. It's not something that we have to deserve. There's not anything that we need to accomplish or do. No checklist to go through before we'll be baptized. It's a gift given to us by God, simply because God loves us. I have a story that I would like to share with you from a, a fellow pastor in our conference who grew up in Alaska. He shares this. It was Easter morning and I was serving as an acolyte, which gave me the luxury of heading up to the balcony, sitting by myself and doodling on paper, drawing pictures during the pouring time of the service when that guy up front, the preacher, was preaching. My brother Stephen was about four to five months old. The room was pretty full in that lovely new sanctuary in the Mission Church. People had on their best clothes. Women were wearing hats. I remember that. The time came in the service when Reverend Howard DeVore asked people to come forward for the baptism of their children. I looked over the side of the balcony railing and saw my folks all dressed up for Easter and other couples get up and walk forward. I also saw an Eskimo woman in her parka get up and walk down the center aisle toward the front of the church. She looked pretty ordinary, almost out of place. I'd never seen her before. She took her place at the communion rail next to the other folks, most Anglo, in their good-looking clothes. There was a pause in the service as Howard leaned over and had a whispered exchange with the Eskimo woman. He'd never seen her before. Howard said something like, I can't baptize your child. We need to talk about this first. So we need to do this another day. I remember watching the woman turn around and walk back down the aisle of the church towards the back of the building. Her baby was clutched to her chest. Leaning over the balcony, I saw her disappear from my sight. She walked under the balcony, out the doors to the left of the sanctuary, and then I heard the outside door slam shut behind her. I knew something very bad had just happened. It almost took my breath away. I knew someone had come forward, someone who may never have been inside a Christian church, had come forward, and they had been turned away. Understanding that people need to understand what baptism is about, yes, I still believe that Howard should have said, I am so glad to see you. God is so glad to see you. We'll baptize your baby if you could stay around long enough after church to talk about just a bit. That day, a switch was flipped in that little boy. And as a sixth grader, he decided that God wanted his church to have doors that were wide open to everyone, to everybody, no matter what. That day, he says, I decided that I wanted to be a part of a church that welcomed people where they were, with their questions, their successes, and their failures, no matter what. I can't stand closed doors. I can't stand barriers we tend to put between people and the love of God in Christ. So throw open the doors. Throw open the doors and let the grace of God, the water of his mercy and unfailing love, touch as many people as possible because that's who we are. That's who God is. That's how God loves. We don't have to fulfill any requirements or expectations. God simply loves us as we are. 
Even in the midst of our sinfulness, God knew, God created us, God knew, God knows that we're sinners. And yet God receives, offers us the opportunity to repent, to change our lives, to live a new way. And so as we remember that today, we'll remember our baptisms. We'll remember that we have been claimed and named by God Almighty, and through Christ we have been saved. I invite you to sing a song, and then we'll do the liturgy together. Jesus called the disciples to show 
share the baptism of death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations.
Will you pray with me? The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may live in grace and peace. Amen. The wondrous works of God are more than we can number. God has blessed us beyond our ability to comprehend. In our baptism, God has called us to a life of witnessing. Let us glorify God through deeds of light and through words that bless and heal. May our offerings reach out around the world in Christ's name. The ushers will not come forward.
to this ordinary, everyday world. May such common practices as running the water, wash our dishes, jumping into the bathtub or the shower, getting caught in the rain on the way out to the car as we make our next destination, or as the tears flow down our cheeks. May we remember our baptisms and be thankful. Go in love, peace, and joy. In Jesus' name, amen.